So I'm at Allegheny Luthery. I brought Ben two guitars I want him to check out. Actually, I brought three guitars. Uh, so this video is all about, I have two Martins, two D18s. Both of them, the truss rods have no tension on them and they're still a little buzzy and the necks are a little too flat. So I want to just lean into a good friend and master guitar builder and see what his take is. So let's go on in and uh, let's check out what's going on with these guitars. Hey man, uh, hey, I brought you two, three guitars. Okay. Um, I have questions about truss rods in D18. So can I show you these D18s? Sure. So this one's like a 2020 um, D18E. So it's got the Fishman in it. Uh, but the truss rod has no tension on it. Um, and it's still just super buzzy. Not super buzzy, but buzzy enough that it psychs me out. Okay. Let me take it to the bench. I haven't played in a month. So I got it and it was really low action. And mm -hmm. I took maybe two turns off the truss rod. and But it loosened up. Like it's, there's no room left to go. Oh, okay. Have your favorite. Hey! <laughs> I mean, that's basically, I don't know if I'll be able to fit anything in there. Two fits. Three starting to lift it. So <clears throat> three thousandths, that's pretty low. Uh, those two guitars are at about seven or eight thousandths. Okay. So um, I typically, I think like five to ten is pretty good. You definitely don't want over like 15. Okay. Um, so if the truss rod's completely loose, because I've also, so I've been running this with a, it's the Humidit Track. The Bluetooth one that um, measures the humidity. So when I got it, it was in the 40s, like low 40s. Yeah. It's now up to like 56, I think. Um, I've just and that's why I just like left it alone. Yeah. To and try and that's always the smartest thing to do is just kind of leave them and let them acclimate and sit for a little bit before you do anything to them. And I do that here too when I get a guitar and I let it sit for like a week or something before I, yeah, you know, especially for, if it's coming from for really science. dry. For science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> science. Um, but, uh, so typically when you, when I've found this before, it's because, well, I guess it could be because of a bunch of different things. This probably has never been refretted. Right? This no, is this is like 2019. 2019. So these are new frets. So something that <clears throat> um, I, the guitar builders and I guess luthiers are like notice when you uh, refret a guitar is making sure that there's not that your uh, the fret slots are not uh, too narrow or too wide. You know, you don't want them too wide because you don't want the frets just falling out. Yep. But if they're too narrow, then you're compounding that. That tension over it, and you can force the neck into a oh, into a back bow. Um, so even though your fingerboard and everything could be completely flat, you put in um, you know frets where the the slots are just a little too thin, or you know you can do that in a number of ways. You can debarb the frets themselves, okay. which I don't really recommend unless you have to do it because you want it to grab somehow. But you can take some off of it, or you can go through with a Dremel. And just kind of widen them a little bit, which I, I do on okay. So there's that. Um, that can force it in. So you can fix it through a refret. Um, some people, what they like to do instead of paying for that, because a refret for me is like, you know, 250 to 300, depending if it's like, you know, bound, unbound, nibs, yeah. all that stuff. So, uh, and then there's always a setup after a refret, right? Because you've yeah. done all the stuff. So instead of doing that, trying to get it out in a dress. So what I would do then is take the strings off, uh, tighten the truss rod a little bit to get it in a, uh, just a slight amount of back bow and level a little bit from the frets in the middle. So and then so back under tension, you'll have relief, but it. it'll be ground out of the frets and okay. not the board. I mean, okay. Where you want it to be is that it's in that, in the board. Yeah. Um, and it probably should be. Um, you could in the fret job, you know, remove the frets. You could level that out of the board by taking more material from yeah. the center. Or, um, if that's okay, just make sure that your fret slots are wide enough yep. that it won't 
force it into back though over time. Because isn't it, like it probably, we're coming out of a pretty dry winter. This guitar came out of Kentucky or Iowa? Iowa. Yeah. And um, so I, I still think that this guitar is probably just really dry. Yeah. So I probably, I mean like, I mean, my first thought is just put real heavy strings on it and then just wait for the big, you know, the hot, humid summer. Yeah. And it like, because it's a new guitar enough that I know that the action's gonna come up. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna change. Yeah, I mean, I know you've said it before, the first couple of years they do, they like to, when they're settling in and becoming what they're becoming, yeah. they kind of do some some weird things. So I guess just being, you know, patient with it. If it were like, you know, someone's is like, this is my one guitar I play it all the time, I need it playable, I don't want to take it out of the frets, like I'm paying you to refret it, then that's what I would do. But if, okay. you know what I mean? So it just depends. Yeah. Um, it's, you do have some relief. There's, okay. It's about three thousandths, maybe no more than four thousandths. Yeah, um, you can kind of see it. Yeah, but between here and here, yeah. and about, it clicks. Yeah. So that means there's a there's space. Okay. It's just digging into them. It's it's gonna rattle. And then I think that's also like it's a D eighteen, so like yeah, you want to play it loud and hard and yeah. do all those bouncy bluegrass things. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you I think, have a pickup in it, right? Yes. Plug it into distortion, man. It won't matter. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Get a whammy yeah. bar. In this Listen thing. to an OCD. That's all you need. Whammy <laughs> bar. Let's do a locking trim on it. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. Well, so that's guitar number one. Um, so this one, I think I'll probably just wait it out, put some heavier strings on it. Just okay. wait until June or July and see how it goes. Yeah. I have another guitar that I'll bring you. Put this one away. Okay. Yep. So this is a 1996 Martin D18V uh, VS. I definitely feel it in the neck shape. It's yeah. kind of a soft V shape. Yeah. So the weird thing with this is that someone has cut into the through saddle. Um, they've made little slots. Yeah. Um, I do that sometimes. I do that on those guitars. And sometimes it's to hold your string spacing. Yeah. Um, and also... Uh, you know, like the saddle slots on those, uh, where the saddle is a little bit uh, wider, so that I can yeah. intonate better. Yeah. And then in doing that, I just I like to hold its place a little bit, so I kind of push and pull with that Got slot it. to to have its okay. spot where it. So <clears throat> I mean, that's not the end of the world. Sometimes it can like leech tone, like the same thing it does up here, is that you want the string to sit in the slot and not be like hugged by the slot, right? Yeah. So. Um, and then this is, um, it's like probably, tusk or something. yeah, tusk, yeah. Cool. And that one's bone. Bone. Yeah, normally it's the other way around. I think this was swapped. Right. So this came from a musician in New Jersey who'd passed away, and it was okay. sold out of his estate. Okay. It's pretty, gotcha. Pretty so typically, I find that people hold onto a plastic or tusk nut, and they do the bone saddle because that always matters, and this only matters on the open, but. You know, that's a good way of saying it too. Yeah. Well, it sounds nice. All right, yeah, so yeah, it sounds killer. This is having the same problem. Not as bad, but if you really dig in, um, see how many hands it takes to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you had a Kaiser, just one. Yeah. But this has more like than the other. So okay. this is probably more like four or five thousandths, which isn't terrible. But if you're really going to dig in and you don't have any more space, again, it's. Uh, a similar thing. I can look at. Um... I don't know if I actually have adjusted the truss right on this. Okay. You were given no preference. It was just like you order them and you get what you get. Snip, son. That's why I always keep my hand here and I go under yeah. right to that little narrow spot and just pull up and it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't completely loose. Okay. So now. I've backed it all the way off, and if I go just to snug, right there, oh. it was probably another eighth of a turn past that. Okay. So that'll give you a little more, especially with lights, you know, if you want to stay with lights. So I can string it back up and check. Awesome. Yeah, you have more. Okay. This is probably like I can measure it, but it's to me it seems more like six or seven. 
Cool, so, yeah, so just at that last, like, quarter turn or whatever. Yeah, and right now it's just snug. So if you need, like, a little bit more, you can back it off entirely. But I try to keep it just, like, barely snug so nothing's rattling. Or, That's you know. my, yeah, that was my worry. So it didn't rattle. Um, might need a new nut. Okay. They're pretty low. Okay. I like to fret on the third, tap on the first. Yep. It's not moving. Okay. So that means it's resting on the first fret. So, um, I, I would just do a new nut probably. Okay. I mean, that could take care of that. If you're getting buzzing up, I mean like really going into it. Yeah. If you're getting buzzing up, then we could look at and see if there's a high fret or not. But, okay. Cool. Yeah, let me... I was playing a John Prine tune the other day and it was getting a lot. Yeah, like if I play really hard. But I mean, any guitar would buzz when you play that hard. Maybe, maybe that's not true. But. You have a lot of relief from high nut and high action at the 12th. Yeah, so yeah, probably a new nut at some point. I think right now it's, yeah, I mean, it's better than it was already, which yeah. is which is great. Um, cool. So, hey, I have one more thing I want to show you. Of course. If you're up for it. Yep. All right, I have one more guitar that I want Ben to look at, and it's this Avian Dove. So I just want to get his perspective. As a professional guitar builder and luthier, what's his take on this guitar? Because I, it's hard to tell. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I want his opinion. It's a pretty nice case. A floral, almost paisley kind of thing going on the side. Yeah, it's very, like, my kids say it's very wedding dress. Wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. But if it were, like, red and blue and stuff, it would be kind of country. You know? Yeah. Sweet. And you've probably seen this one. Yeah, I watched the video. 12 fret to the body. The neck's pretty comfortable. It's almost like a mild D shape. It's tiny, you know I mean? right? It's, it's so tiny. thin. It's very thin. Peg head accessible truss rod. It's very comfortable. It kind of reminds me, I have a little Yamaha as far as mm -hmm. like the, the feel here. I mean, the neck's super thin. The the spacing uh, in the strings is a little tighter. And, um, and I have like fat stubby fingers. So, you know, getting into some of those chords. Sometimes I get some, you know, buzz in between them, but this is pretty comfortable. Yeah. So one thing, uh, check out the neck joint like down here on the heel. Um, you can see that it's like, so that it came with shims. So you could take the neck off and shim it yourself is what they say. Okay. Okay. So that's floating. That's completely floating. So. Just tapping a little bit here. Um, you know, like. Taylor, you're familiar with Taylor's mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, they have like two bolts going into the heel and then one going up underneath the tongue to kind of change that angle. Okay. It's kind of a similar thing going on here, I guess, maybe. Okay. Um, I mean, it... that kind of stuff, it can work. One thing I don't, well, one thing I'm a little suspicious of, I really, so I have a lot of respect for Taylor and, and, the, and their ingenuity and the way that they do certain things, um, and they tend to do it right. And... I know it's really hard to, in such a traditional realm, introduce something new and not get, you know, spat at for doing it. So, um, so I don't want to knock anyone down for that. But having a floating bridge somewhere and it's floating and then it's just barely touching here at the tip, I feel like I'm not really hearing it. But anything additional, barely touching the top that's not glued down. I mean, you could have issues with it kind of rattling and stuff in the future. But it's a good looking top. There's lots of medullary rays, you know, going in between those little 
Yeah. Yeah, so the spec sheet says that this is Engelman. Okay. Um, that's cool. It's, um, the rosette is definitely different. I understand that, like, you know, the bridge, this whole aesthetic, the way that the, the tongue kind of slopes off here from the mm -hmm. base side toward the treble. It's kind of that whole thing, and its body size is like a nod to, like, turn of the century, late 1800, you know, parlor guitars and stuff like that. Um, this neck, like, the heel joint is, like, a more modern thing. That very, like, stiff, like, 90 degree, mm -hmm. um, wide here, but super, I mean, it's a little thicker there, too. does have a volute. Three-piece neck, so I mean that's you could get away with a thinner neck because of that, because mm -hmm. you have that stringer in there, and and uh, and you still have that strength. Um, mild volute. Peghead kind of reminds me of something like seagull or something, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit, but um. Very like serpentine. Yeah. And these tuners almost look like Godo. You know, like, I think, I think, like the I Godo, think they, like uh, what are they? The eight tens. Yeah. I think, it, yeah, that's my take is they look like them. I don't know if they are them. Yeah. Um, the back and sides are like kind of like ribbon sapelli or something. Yeah, they said African mahogany. Yeah. Um, so that is, that has another name. What is that other name? It's not Gigi. That's Australian. What's African mahogany has, an, has another name. I'm sure more than one, but I can't remember what it is. It um, I think it looks cool as far as like, yeah. It has that ribbon, that ribbony mm -hmm. and that shimmery kind of effect on it. A lot of them are like that. Typically, I'm not gonna like, um, I don't like to lump everything in together uh, as far as um, woods because it's really like per piece, you know. Like <laughs> to me. Engelman isn't just one thing and, you know, Adirondack and Sitka. I mean, they can have, like, a realm that they nest in, but it... Anyway, typically, African mahogany is um, denser. It's heavier than Honduran mahogany. And a lot of the time, it's darker in color. And you can kind of see that here. I mean, this is a, um, a clear finish, but it does kind of have this dark darker kind of rosy thing a lot of honduran mahogany that i see is very blonde very pale mm -hmm. um that's why a lot of people stain it so it's cool i mean it's all wood looks like wood purfling around the top and back um that, that looks like rosewood cap uh heel cap yeah rosewood board in your opinion is this similar quality similar construction to american made you know, boutique type guitars? American made boutique type of guitars? Um, I don't know, that might be a... Might, that might be a stretch. I guess it's, um... It's cool that it's all solid woods, even the wood binding. I mean, a lot of companies... A lot of companies don't do that even in the upper tiers, you know? Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of positives about that. I feel like for me... Um, it's, it's a comfortable guitar just to like sit down on the couch and kind of jam around. And that's what my Yamaha is to me. It's just a newer Yamaha solid spruce top and it's like a OM thing, but you know, everything else is laminated and it's just a fun guitar to sit down on the couch and jam out to. So to me, this isn't so much like, um, you know, the American, Canadian, and, and European boutique realm is like, I don't know if this would sit well with those. And, and I, I tend to agree. Like, I really like this guitar. I think it sounds really good. I, so I restrung it. It came with incredibly bright 80-20 strings okay. and didn't have really any low end. I put some Foster Bronze Diodarios on it, and it really has a lot more low end. Yeah. And it sounds, it sounds and plays really, really well, mm -hmm. but it's still not quite the same in my, to my ear and to my hands. Really fun to play, um, but it's just not, yeah. like there's something, and because the guitars we just played of yours, they're similar materials, similar sizes and smaller, yeah. but they sound entirely different. Yeah. Like yours sound, and that's where I'm trying to figure out what is the actual difference, but very cool guitar. Thanks for thanks for your. I mean, you picked up on things that I didn't know, and I really value your perspective and opinion. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool little guitar.
Yeah, I, mean, I it's hard to find another one like it. So, cool, man. Yeah, thanks. it's definitely its own thing. Yeah, thanks for checking it out. Yeah. <laughs>